you we praise you we thank you for being with us through everything that we've been going through over the last year we are thankful for you Lord for your presence in our lives for the comfort you give us for the love you show us every day we thank you for the weather and for our brothers and sisters here and our families and our friends we thank you for your 
presence in our daily lives. And right now, Lord, we focus on your most beautiful gift, the gift of your Son who died for us for our salvation. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we focus now on our communion time. Our communion song. Amazing grace, my chains are gone. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 3, 
we see John the Baptist sees Jesus approaching him and he says to the people around him, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You know, I was thinking about this. As Christians, we understand some of that meaning, but think of it from this, from the Jews' standpoint of the day. When they thought about lambs and sacrifices, what could have come to mind for them? So I did this look at lambs and sacrifices, and of course, there's a lot of them in the law. But one thing that came to mind was Isaiah 53. Remember the passage, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before it cheers, so he did not open up his mouth. Could that have come to the minds of some of these people as they heard those words of John? In Leviticus, one place, it mentions that lambs are to be used as an offering for a sacrifice for sins. Is that one of the passages that could have come to mind for the Jews of the day? But there's also the lamb that was slain, and remember for the exodus and for Passover. And the blood was put on the doorpost in order that the, the angel, the death angel, would pass over their houses if they had that. The earliest reference I could find to lambs and sacrifices was Abraham and Isaac. Remember, Abraham took his son Isaac and headed for Mount Moriah. And on the way, Isaac says, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham replied, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. And I sit there and think, decades, centuries later, God provided the lamb for the sacrifice for our sins. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to the cross, died on the cross, so that our sins could be forgiven. And that's what we celebrate. As John said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, your sins, my sins. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for sending Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I pray that as we partake of the emblems, we will remember the sacrifice that was made by Jesus on the cross. And Lord, I pray that we will never forget that each and every day. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As you're led, just come up and take a cup off of the table.
Hello, GCC family. 
It's good to be here today, isn't it? Praising God. You know, we had a few things. We had to rub the dust off. We haven't used the, the equipment back there, and we had to get it in sync. And some gremlins snuck in and did some things when nobody else was in the building. You know how that happens, and uh, trying to figure things out. So we are grateful that we're here. Uh, we're grateful that if you're watching online, and uh, we can praise God together. Well, let me tell you about George. George was a peacemaker with a big heart, and he had a great sense of humor. Everybody loved George. At his church, at his place where he was employed, at the hospital. The reason why everybody loved George so much was he was kind and respectful to everybody, no matter who they were. George's children remember his last days as he was in the hospital before he died. The hospital administrator came to visit him, and they talked like they were old friends. Then a janitor, one of the janitors, came to visit him, and they too had a great visit. When the janitor left, the children said to their dad, you know, do you realize you treated the hospital administrator and the janitor exactly the same? George smiled and chuckled and then he said, let me ask you something. If the hospital administrator left for two weeks and the janitor left for two weeks, who do you think you'd miss the most? And then George called his children close to his bed. And he said, I carry these two things in my pocket all the time, even when I do the lawn. And he pulled out a pocket-sized cross, and he said, on that cross it says, God loves me. And on the marble, he looked and he said, engraved in very small characters, it says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He said, the cross reminds me of how deeply God loves me. The marble reminds me of how deeply God wants me to love others. You know, just about every week we gather together, whether it's virtually or here in person, at least once since I got here, we've said, let's have a great week. Say it with me. As the GCC family, loving God and loving people. You know, and that's a cutesy saying. Yeah, it's neat. And it's, you know, but there are four words that I want us to pay close attention to and drill down into our heart and live with every part of fiber of our being. And I hope over these next four weeks, Lord willing, that we can go through those four words. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. And this week, today, we're going to look at the word love. Next week, Lord willing, we're going to look at the word God. And then we're going to go back and look at the word love again. And then we're going to end the month of January looking at people. Love God, love people. Today we're going to look at the word love. In two weeks we're going to look at that love, word love again but in a deeper way looking specifically at the word itself. Today I want us to see how important the word love is. So love, example number one. If I were to ask you to share from memory a verse, I'm guessing that a large number of those present, those watching online, would probably pick out John 3.16. Because John 3.16 is a very popular verse. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that who ever believes in him should not perish, 
but have eternal life. Why is that verse so popular? I think it's pretty clear. The word love. What did God do? He loved. How did God love? Jesus. How can you earn this love? Love. Example number two. We see John 3.16. We know John 3.16. We believe three, John 3.16. But how did God show his love? Well, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, which happens to be one of my very favorite verses in the Bible, tells us exactly how God shows his love because it says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. No matter how I try to frame it, no matter how I try to shape it, no matter how I try to explain it, no matter what, this verse, Romans 5, 8, is just plain crazy. Yeah, I said a verse in the Bible is pl plain crazy. Because it goes against everything we are as a human, our experience, our knowledge, our wisdom, our, uh, our thinking, our logic. God did not wait for you to get good enough. God did not wait for you to pass some test. God did not wait for you to improve, not even a little. God loved you when you were still a horrible, miserable, awful, lost sinner. How can you earn this love? Love. Example number three. Comes from 1 John chapter 3, the first verse. And I'm going to use the New International Version of that scripture because I just like the way that it's translated and the meaning is given so boldly and nicely. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Because God the Father lavished us with undeserved love, we are a child of God. Now, if you notice in that scripture, it uses the plural, we and us. But I want us to make this scripture personal. Now, we have done this before, so it might sound a little familiar, and we probably will do it again, because I think we need to remember this and remind ourselves of this. So if I were to ask you, how great is the love God has lavished on you? You would then answer, I am a child of God, and that is what I am. It's right there on the screen. But it ought to come out of your heart. Say it with me. I am a child of God, and that is what I am. Now, when we are unsure of something, we kind of get mealy-mouthed and kind of slur. This is not a statement that we want to be mealy mouth and slur. We want to say it with boldness. We want to say it like we mean it. We want to say it out loud. Say it with me. I am a child of God, and that is what I am. I am a child of God, and that is what I am. So if I were to ask you how great is the love God has lavished on you, you would say, I am a child of God, and that is what I am. God gives us his love. And because of that, he gives us his, uh, our ability to be his child. How can you earn this love? 
love. Example number four. And that comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, that it uses seven words in English. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. So, I've saved the best for last. Wait a minute. You're saying this is better than God loving us and saving the world? This is better than God loving us before we deserved it? This is better than God making us a child of him? Yes, it's because this scripture tells us why and what we are all about, what our mission is. You see, the first three examples are all about us. And we love it when it's all about us, don't we? But when we read this fourth example, we realize it's not just all about us. This fourth example is important because it is about others. Our mission is to love others. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. Once we realize that God picked us out, picked us up, loved us, and sent us out into the world to love others, we are living, carrying forth his mission to love others. How? Can we earn this love? God wants us to see that the word love is so important because God loves us so much that God sent his son, his only son, to die for you. That God loves you so much that he couldn't wait for you to get good enough. That he loves you enough to die for you when you didn't deserve it. God loves you so much that he poured out his love on you and made you his child. God loves you so much that he wants you to share his love with others. Share that same love that he has given to you. So we've asked the question over and over. How can you earn this love? How can you earn this love? Well, you can't. You are loved by God, not because you earned his love or can earn his love, but because he loved you first. And since the love God has loved you with, you can love others. You can love others with that same love that God loved you with. And that's important. Let's pray. Father God, we are thankful that you have reached out and brought us to you. You have picked us up. You have picked us up. You have loved us. And you have sent us out into the world to love the world with the same love that you have already given us. You did that through your son's death on the cross. And have shown it in many, many, many ways. But especially the fact that when we didn't deserve it most, you loved us most. And we are thankful for what you have done and for what Jesus did on the cross. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.